So what is OpenID Connect and how does it relate to OAuth? So we've been talking a lot about OAuth in the previous videos, but what we haven't talked about is OpenID Connect. And frankly speaking, OpenID Connect pretty much powers the entire internet. <laughs> and if you go to the uh, OpenID Connect course back, then it says something like, OpenID Connect is a simple identity layer on top of the OAuth 2 protocol, okay, uh, which enables clients to verify the identity of end users based on authentication performed by an authorization server, as well as to obtain basic profile information about the end user in an interoperable and REST-like manner. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's a nice description for a spec and I think it's really nice, but let's maybe break this down to make it a little bit simpler. Okay, so I'm using this diagrams.net application, right? And I mean, maybe you remember these videos about uh, OAuth I did where I explained, okay, how can this application actually save this file that I'm currently editing in my Google Drive, right? So if I now uh, hit save, it's actually going to upload this file to my Google Drive. And this is basically what OAuth 2 allows or OAuth 2 powers this behavior more or less, right? So you have this application, it's a third-party application. It um, orchestrates some approval flow for the authorization server, like it redirects to the authorization server, it gets a code, and then it exchanges this code, think of it as a voucher for an access token. And with this access token, we, you can actually access the API. So this is what OAuth can do. But the thing with OAuth is, it's only about authorization, right? As the name already says, OAuth stands for Open Authorization, but it's not about authentication. So this application here, if we were to only use OAuth, does not know who I am. So it doesn't know anything about me. It doesn't know my name, it doesn't know my email address, my nickname, my profile, anything like that, completely unknown. Well, my, now you might say, well, actually this application also doesn't need to know these kind of things in order to save the file to your Google Drive, and you are actually right, it doesn't need to, but it's it might be nice, or in, like in some cases, it might be nice to know actually about the end user, a few things at least, what is your first name, what is your email address, uh, something like that. And if you look closely at this UI, <laughs> then you can actually see that this application knows a little bit about me, because I have a Google account where production is the first name and Coda is like the last name. So it somehow knows my last name. And this is something that, yeah, OAuth 2 doesn't provide out of the box. So you could, of course, do custom claims and, and things like that. But this is actually what OpenID Connect is for. Uh, so OpenID Connect adds identity information on top of the OAuth 2 framework. And let's make an example to see how that works. And you will see that the flow for OpenID Connect is actually very, very similar or only slightly different to the normal uh, OAuth flow. Okay, so let's take this diagrams.net application. So for this example, we're using the authorization code grant. I think this is like a, a grant you should be very familiar with. Like if you've ever used this login with Google button, and uh, then you have actually used uh, like the authorization code. Grant. You open up this page, um, you're not logged in, and then it says, hey man, like if you want to use this app, you can sign up with your email or you can sign up with your Google account. And then you click on this sign in with Google. And what happens is that it gets, that it redirects you to the authorization server of Google. So exact same behavior like OAuth. And also the redirect URL structure is also very, very similar. Um, the only difference here is, and this is what I marked in red, is that you request additional scopes in the URL. So remember, like scope is more or less the permissions you're asking for. I mean, if I have a third party application, like as a user, I don't want this third party application to know everything about me. That's why OAuth, like in the initial spec, it says it's about giving third party applications limited access to HTTP resources. Right, so the user should be in control what the third party application can see. And this is exactly what the scope parameter is for. So depending on the API, uh, you can say, okay, I want to have this scope, for example. So this is a scope for editing and creating files in Google Drive. So for this diagrams.net application, this is definitely something you would ask for. And if, you, if you're wondering about this orange stuff here, uh, this is just like an encoding thing. So basically, 
in an URL, like you cannot have spaces and uh, certain characters are not allowed. And that's why you have like a different encoding. So I just marked them as orange. But uh, if you look at it, this is just like a URL. So it's like the way that Google API defines scopes. This is always a little bit different for every API. So this is like colon. And then you have uh, percent two, which is like uh, percent two F, which is slash. So HTTPS colon slash 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 and so on. What is different here now is that you request a special scope. So you request the open ID scope, which means, hey, um, Google, I actually want to know something about the user and I want to have like an identity token. So an identity token is basically a JSON web token that contains a little bit of information about the end user. And depending on what scopes you're asking for, it contains more or less information. Yeah, and there are some scopes that are like, uh, yeah, standardized by OpenID Connect. So for example, you can ask for the email scope. So if you ask for OpenID scope and for email, you're going to get like an identity token back that contains the email of the end user. You can also ask for profile information as it was described here, right? Basic profile information about the end user. So this is an additional scope, but let's just take email as an example. And apart from that, you have the normal URL parameters like, uh, like state and probably you're using Pixie or ideally you're using Pixie. And uh, yeah, you, you also have that. And then you get redirected to this yeah, authorization server. And then it says, hey, this application would like to access your Google account. It would like to access your Google Drive, read file, and it, it wants to know your email address. So you would have like an additional point here. And then if you click yes, uh, then it redirects you to the redirect URL specified here. By the way, for security reasons, this redirect URL must be registered when you actually sign up at this Google service. Otherwise it would be too easy to steal the token. And you actually get back like this state and the code. And then you can take the code and exchange it for an access token. And the difference with OpenID Connect is since we ask for the OpenID scope, we are actually also going to get an ID token back. So in addition to the access token, which is can basically be any string, usually in practice, it's like a JSON web token, like a JSON web signature token. We also get this ID token back because we ask for it in the scope. And the ID token is like a JSON web uh, signature token. So it's like a signed payload or signed claims which contains like a few things so for example before we've been asking for the email right so in that case this id token would contain the email and it also contains like an additional field like email verified or an additional claim email verified true that's just how it is uh, according to the to the spec and if we had asked for other information so for example if we had put in like profile and uh, then we would have also gotten information about, I don't know, nickname and these kind of things. So depending on what scopes you ask for here, uh, you're going to have more or less information in your um, ID token. Yeah, and now that you have this ID token, you can take a look at the email and you can use or you can do with it whatever you want, right? So for example, you could display the email here at the top. I don't know what benefit that would have, but theoretically you could. Yeah, so that is OpenID Connect in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching. Give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.